When it comes to getting data between different systems, people still end up using CSV files, whether it's a good idea or not. And to get data from a CSV file into Kafka is actually pretty straightforward. You don't need to write any code. You don't need to kind of like go and get some Python to read from a file or Java to pick up a file and read it and use a producer API and all that kind of stuff that you might assume. You actually just need to use Kafka Connect with the appropriate plugin. So I've written a blog about this. You can go and look at that if you prefer reading these things. If you prefer watching how to do it, let's see now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the appropriate connector. So there's a connector called Kafka Connect Spool DIR. This simply lets you read flat files from a file system like JSON or CSV and so on and stream them into a Kafka topic. Kafka Connect, if you're not aware, it's part of Apache Kafka and it's the integration API. It lets you take data from a system and stream it into Kafka or take data from Kafka and stream it out to another system. So you've got data in a database or message queues or flat files. You can stream that into Kafka. You've got data in Kafka that you want to push down to NoSQL stores or document stores or other databases or flat files. You use Kafka Connect to do that. So we've chosen the appropriate connector using Kafka Connect Spool DIR. We install it. Depending on how you're running Kafka Connect, you install it in different ways, but using the Confluent Hub uh, client is a good way to do it. I'm using Docker, so we install it slightly differently. I've also done a video which shows how to go and install connectors, so go and check that out if you're not sure. The documentation for the connector is nice and clear. It shows you how to go and use it, and we're going to walk through it now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check that my stack is up. And I've got Kafka here, I've got my Zookeeper, I've got Kafka Connect with the appropriate plugin installed, or I think it is. Let's just check for ourselves. So here is a little command. It's going to go against the Kafka Connect REST API. It's going to check against Kafka uh, Connect uh, plugins, which ones are installed, and it uses JQ to pass the, the JSON output, and it just lists out which are my connectors. So there are my connectors. I've also got the GDBC one installed because after we've got all this CSV data in, I'm going to show how you can stream that straight down to a database, which is kind of useful. And then we've got some other ones which just ship with Kafka by default. So we've got the connector and we've also got some JSON data. So let's have a little look at that. In the data folder, we've got uh, one called unprocessed. So let's have a look in unprocessed and there's a file called orders CSV. And if we open that up, so in unprocessed and orders, you can see you've got a black bog standard CSV file. You've got a header row uh, with the different field names in, and then we've got comma, se comma separated values. So we're going to take that uh, file and we're going to load it into Kafka. Now, one of the things about Kafka is that the messages in Kafka are just bytes. If you're from a database background, you're used to working with schemas and you've got a bunch of fields in a table and you say, I'm going to insert a value for this field and I select star from this table and the database says, here are all these different field names and here are their different values. And if you look at the DDL for a table, it says, well, this field here, it's got this name, it's got this data type, maybe it's got defaults and all this kind of stuff. And there's just a schema. We take that as a given, we work with a database, there is a schema. When you get into Kafka, it's actually just bytes. It's a much lower level abstraction, which is more powerful because we can do what with it, whatever we want to. But if we're starting to move data around, if we do an integration here, we're getting data from a CSV file into Kafka and it's going into Kafka because we want to use it somewhere else. We want to think about schemas. And people don't always like this because people think, oh, schemas, that's, like, that's an annoying distraction. Can't I just shove the data into Kafka? And we can. I'm going to show you how you can just take CSV data and shove CSV data into Kafka. But if we go and have a look at that file again, this, uh, this order CSV file, there is actually a schema of sorts here. We've got a bunch of field names. So these field names give us an element of a schema. It doesn't tell us the data types, it doesn't tell us defaults, it doesn't tell us other stuff, but there's an element of a schema. So what we're gonna do is when we load this data into Kafka, we're gonna say, apply the schema that you can find to that data, and then we're gonna serialize the data into Kafka, we're gonna serialize into these bytes that Kafka stores, and we're gonna use a serialization method, we're gonna use Avro or Protobuf or JSON schema, a method which lets us capture that schema, we store it in the schema registry, and then the messages that go onto Kafka, we've got access to that schema. So when we come to read the data from Kafka, our consuming application, whether it's a consumer API that we write into our own service, whether it's Kafka Connect, whether it's Key SQL DB, any consumer can go to the schema registry and pull out the schema for this data and knows how to deserialize it and knows what the different fields are. If we just chuck CSV data onto the topic, any consumer now just has like CSV and they've got to figure out what's going on. 
So I'm going to show you both ways, but I would always advise you to think carefully about the schemas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a simple connector. I'm going to clear the screen there and let's have a look at this configuration. So we're going to create a connector. This is its name here. So SpoolDIR00 because we're going to create a bunch of different connectors showing the different options. Here's our connector class that we're going to specify. We're going to write data from the file to this particular topic. Here's where the data is at. It's in this unprocessed folder. When it's being processed, it gets written to here. If there's a problem reading it, it gets written to there. We need to specify the pattern of files to pick up. So here we're saying anything that ends in CSV. So it's a regular expression. Because it's JSON that we're passing through curl, we need to actually escape this uh, dot here. So we've escaped the dot as part of regex, so we need to escape the escape. Um, and then here we're saying we would like the connector to generate the schema. So have a look at the data that's in the file. It's going to use the first row as the header, um, otherwise it can't really guess at the schema. Um, and it's going to generate that schema for us. So we go and run that. And it says, OK, I've created it. So let's go and have a look at the topics we've got on our cluster. So this is all under Docker, but if you're just using a standard broker, you can use Kafka Cat still. I'm using it under Docker, um, but Kafka Cat is a really useful tool consuming, producing data from Kafka, but also looking at the metadata on the brokers. So here I'm using the metadata query dash L and then dash J to return JSON. And if we do it without that JQ, you can see you just get like a huge bunch of JSON. Um, and if we use it with the JQ, we can see you can actually split out and just say, just give me the topics and the topic name. So here are the topics and topic name. And we've got a topic called orders spool DAR. And what we can do with that is we can paste that and we can take that here and say, give me the information from that topic. So we can have a look at it. We're going to consume from that topic. We're going to say, just give me the last one message. Again, spit it out as JSON and just show me the payload. And you'll notice here we're saying it's in Avro because my Kafka Connect worker is set up by default to serialize data as Avro. So we do that. It says, well, here is your data. And you'll notice here, we've got a schema, order ID, customer ID. Now it's picked all these things up as strings because it, we didn't say anything other than it just said like, here are the field names. And so it just says, well, let's call it a string and we can figure the rest out later. And we'll show you how you can actually manipulate that schema also. But now we're just starting simple. Here's the schema based on the field names in just that CSV. And you can see here, it says we've reached the end of the topic at offset 500 and there were 500 different rows in that CSV file. So if we head over here, um, and go look in the data folder again, you'll see in the processed folder, so ls minus l processed, there's our order CSV, so it's been moved from unprocessed into processed. So let's have a look at the file. Well, if we just do a word count, num so wc is word count, dash l number of lines in processed orders, it says there are 501 rows. It's like, ah, oh, but we say we're at offset 500 in the topic because the first row is the header row. So we've taken the header row for our schema and then we've ingested those 500 messages. What happens if we copy that file back into the processed folder? No, sorry, the unprocessed folder. Let's do that. So copy it from processed uh, orders into unprocessed. And you would expect at the top of the screen we've got Kafka Cat is still running. Why is it not showing any information? Well, Kafka Cat, sorry, Kafka Connect, the connector, the spool DAR connector, tracks where it's got to based on the connector name, so we've called it whatever, whatever, zero, zero, based on that, and then the file names that are there and the offset within that file name. So it says, well, I processed a file called orders, which has got these 500 rows. So if we wanted to process those orders as if they were new, we're going to do this. We're going to copy it from, let's see where it's got to actually, so ls and just list all of those. So it's still in the process folder. So let's move it from, so it's actually picked it up. It says I've processed this, so I'll just shift it to the processed one. So move that back to unprocessed, but let's give it a new name. So orders2.csv. So we've put that into there and now you start at the top of the screen and we can see we're at offset a thousand. The connector said, oh, this must be new data because it's got a new file name and it processes it all over again. Now let's go and see what else we can do with this data. If we just inspect that data again, so Kafka out here, just show me the last one uh, in, the, uh, in the topic. Instead of just picking out the payload field, let's look at, have a look at the whole lot. So we're saying JQ uh, dot, just show me the whole thing. And we can see up here, we've got the payload, which is what we saw before. If we page up, you can see some cool stuff that the connector does. It actually writes headers. So headers are part of Apache Kafka since quite a few versions ago. And it's information within the message itself in the actual header bit. It's like additional metadata that you want to add in. And so it's put in here, where did this data come from? 
So we can see this message that we're looking at here came from that orders two that we just put in there. Where was the, the full path of it? What was the length, the offset and so on? So that's useful information that you've got access to with each message. We've also got a key. So Kafka messages, they're key value bytes plus timestamp plus header. The key is an empty struct. So the key is no, we don't have a key for the data. And a lot of the time you do want a key for the data because the key defines the partition it'll get allocated to by default. If you don't have a key, it'll just round robin across how many partitions you've got. And a lot of the time you do want to make sure you've got the same messages for a given business key across uh, same messages within the same partition. So let's create ourselves a new connector um, where we're actually going to set the key of the data based on a value within the source file. So I'm going to run this little command here and this is going to list out the connectors that I've got defined already and lets me select which ones I'd like to delete. So it's a, a neat tool called Pico. Um, so what we're doing there is we're taking the REST API, pipe the output of all the different connectors through JQ into Pico and then take the output from Pico and pass it to a, a delete call against the REST API. So if I show you this bit of the command, that just lists the connectors. Oops, not that bit there. That bit there. So it says, show me the connectors. Well, there aren't any because I've just deleted it. Um, so it's a useful way just to quickly manage the connectors that you've got. Anyway, now let's go and create ourselves a new connector. And this is going to read the same data. So let's move that data back. So let's remind ourselves where everything's at. So that's in processed. So let's move processed orders two back to unprocessed orders.csv. And because there aren't any connectors running, that's going to stay exactly where it is. So you can see there are my different folders and it's just there. So now let's create a new connector and this one's going to be 0, 01. If I call it 00, zero it's going to say well I've processed a file called orders.csv with this particular offset and so on. I'm not going to reprocess it. So we're going to create a brand new connector and process all of the data from scratch. It's the same configuration as before. We've got the schema generation enabled but we've also said set the particular uh, key value based on this field uh, in the payload. So we're saying set the key based on the order ID and the order ID comes from uh, the fields in the CSV file. Again, we've got the CSV first row as header is true. We obviously need that because we can't say uh, use the order ID field if there's no header field because otherwise the connector doesn't know which field is the order ID. And the file needs to be in place when we create the connector because otherwise it can't go and inspect it to figure out the schema. So we've got the, scheme, the file in place uh, in the source location. We create the connector and it says, okay, I've created that. Now let's see what's happened. Let's go and list out our topics. It's okay, we've got a new topic called orders spool dr01, which is good. Let's consume from it. So if you're wondering what I'm doing here, let me uh, cancel that and clear. I'll keep on pressing control R, which lets you um, search back through your bash history or ZSH history. So I type dash C because I know that's the bit of the Kafka cat, uh, command that I want to use. So dash C and now I can keep on pressing control R and page back through all the different times I've used Kafka, uh, oh, I've used a command with dash C in it. So it's just a quick way to get back and forth between your commands. If you type history, you can see all of your different commands there. So control R and then type in the different bits that you want to search for. Anyway, so we're going to say order spooled AR01 and we say just show me the last one and this time again show me everything within the payload or everything within the entire message. And so now here we can say here's the topic, there's the partition, the offset, here are my orders, uh, sorry the headers as before, payload as before and now the key is a struct that's got the order ID within it. So we're capturing the order ID and we're storing that within the key. The key we're serializing as a string, we could serialize, as, serialize it as Avro if we wanted to. But now we're guaranteed that all of the messages for a given key will exist within the same partition. So it's a useful thing to do. It's also important if you're going to use that data downstream with something like key SQL DB, which relies on messages having a given key set. There's ways around it, but if it makes sense to do so logically within the data, we may as well do it at ingest because that's a good thing to do. Let's think how we can build on this further. We've set the schema by taking the header row. We've also set the key by saying, we'll use this field within uh, the value um, as the message key. What about though, this thing here, where we're saying, well, here is the data that we got out and all these fields are strings. Ah, some of them are strings. It's like it's a model, it's an address and so on. But some of them, like an ID, this looks like an integer to me. That looks like an integer to me. That looks like a, a decimal or a float. How can we set those appropriately? Now, there's two different ways to do this. 
within the connector itself, you can actually specify the entire schema. So you say, don't generate the schema, here is the schema, and apply that to the data as it's ingested. And you type out the full schema in length, or you build it somewhere else and specify that JSON within the configuration to pass the schema in. Or you can say, well, take the, the schema, kind of pick it up automatically, but we're going to use what's called a single message transform, which is part of Kafka Connect, to cast different fields as we want to. So let's do that. First off, I'm going to use this Pico uh, thing again, just to kind of get rid of the connector uh, that exists already. Otherwise, you're going to get multiple connectors trying to read the same files and things will get confusing. So let me run this and show you what that REST API does. That lists out the connectors. And then this passes that list into a tool called Pico. Pico lets you select different options from standard in. So if there's only one option. So we're going to select that option and it passes it through um, that we then run through this delete against the REST API to get rid of that connector. Let's go and create this additional connector now. So again, we're going to use a different uh, name. We're also going to set up our data. So ls minus l against the data folder. So we've got that order CSV is in the processed folder. So let's move that from processed orders to unprocessed and ls again. Okay, so we've got that file underneath unprocessed. And now here's our new configuration. So again, uh, connector 02, so we give it a new name so that it processes all of the data afresh. Different topic, same stuff here as before, same stuff here as before. And now we add in a transforms clause. We give it a name, we're calling it cast types. You could call it Fred if you want to, it's just a label, it's just a name. Use that label uh, in the second part of the uh, configuration here, so transforms.label. Each transform has got a type. So here we're saying we're going to use the cast transformation against the value part of the message. You can also transform uh, key part of the message. So here you'd use dollar key. Here we're going to use dollar value because it's a field within the value. And then here we put in additional configuration for that particular transformation. So some transformations are about modifying topic names or dropping fields and so on and so on. So depending on the particular transformation that you're using, you'll be specifying different configuration here or sometimes not at all. Sometimes you simply say transforms label and then label that type is whatever and that's enough that the transformation needs to execute. But a lot of time we pass in additional configuration. So here we're saying here are the map uh, mappings that we would like to do. We'd like to say an order ID, it's an integer 32, so is customer ID. Here the order ID, uh, sorry, the order total, we're going to call it a float. So we do that this time. Again, it gets created, and this time, hopefully, we're going to see that schema has come through with the appropriate fields set on it. And we can actually do this by going to the schema registry, which is where these schemas are being stored. So the schema registry, it's got a REST API, we can query it. So here we're going to do a get against the schema registry. Here's the particular subject that we're going to look at. So the uh, spooled AR02 is my topic, the value uh, part of it, not the key part of it, but the value part of it. And we're going to run it through GQ, take the schema part of it. And because the schema is stored as JSON within a JSON response, we need to kind of run it through, take the JSON and de-escape it and spit it out just like this. So there's our schema. And if we page up, we can see the schema, uh, it's type record, it's for value. And down here, order ID is an integer, customer ID is an integer, order total is a float. And this is really important because we're going to take this data further and use it downstream. We're going to go and put it into a database. We're going to use it in case equal DB. We're going to write a, a service which is going to read that data and it needs to know what are the types of these columns. You don't have to. As I said before, you can just take raw CSV data and shove raw CSV data into a topic. But now you're saying to any application that wants to use it, that's now your problem. Whereas if you're the one ingesting that data, you're probably closer to the source, you know what the schema is, so you declare the schema now, and now your users are much happier and don't hate you. Okay, so we've created that, and we can go and have a look at the data uh, using Kafka Cat again. So let's consume it out of here. Correct topics so of spooled IR02. Okay, same data, but now we can see the data is coming through as integers, it's coming through as floats. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. Schemas, super important. They make a massive difference to how um, easily maintainable your pipelines are, how you can avoid tightly coupling services together. Because even though you're using something like Kafka, which enables loose coupling, if you start not providing schemas, you start just saying like, here's CSV and now the consumer has to talk to the producer to find out what on earth is going on, then things become more tightly coupled. Schemas are a good idea, but you don't have to use them. 
if you'd rather make life difficult for your consumers downstream, if you don't actually know what the schema is, and it's like not fair that I'm ranting about this at you because your just job is to get CSV data into a Kafka topic, then you can actually do that. So let's clear out the existing uh, connectors that we've got. So here's our Pico command again. So let's delete that one as well. And we've deleted that. Let's set up our data. So let's move our orders processed to there, ls minus l against the data folder. So, okay, we're back to square one, we're ready to go. We've got a CSV file of order information. Let's have a look at that. So head, unprocessed orders, there's our data. Now let's take that and let's just shove that into a Kafka topic. So here's our new connector. So spooled AR03. Connector class, as before, our value converter is just string. We're not gonna use Avril, we're not gonna use JSON, because that would actually take the idea of a lump of string and try and encode it within a field. We just want to say, read this stuff in from file and write it as string into your Kafka topic. So we take that value, we're going to write it onto this topic from these files. Go and do that. It goes off and it does that. So let's go and have a look at the data that we've written now. So that's going to be uh, in this topic here. So we're going to do that and we're going to do this. So it's in 03 topic and we want the last message from the topic, we're going to consume from it and we're going to do this and it says okay there's your message so we've not got any schema to it uh, if we try and ask it to spit it out as json and do this it says well okay here's your json and we put that through jq and it says that's what it looks like so you can just see we've got a null key we've got a payload which is just our string which is just our csv that we've pulled in from the flat file you still got your header information and if we say well show me the whole thing so uh, from the beginning of the topic show all of the data it says well here is all the data and don't show it as json just show me the values in those messages there's your csv file okay and if we split the screen there and let's copy from uh, the data folder processed and copy into data uh, unprocessed and call it foo.csv to trigger it to read the messages again. If you keep an eye on the top of the screen, you're going to see all that data come through again because the connector picks up that new CSV data that's landed in that file. If we have a look at the uh, data folder, you'll see it's taken those, those files, it's taken them from unprocessed, it's taken the CSV data, shoved it into a Kafka topic and put those files into the processed folder. So in a sense, that's all you need to do. And maybe I should have opened with saying, here's how to do it simply. But it's actually much more important to understand when you're building things around Kafka, how are people going to use that data? If we just look at like our specific little requirements here, we end up building systems which aren't really as optimal and flexible as they should be, given the power of Kafka to integrate things. I want to finish up by showing you a couple more cool little tricks that you can do with this data that we're getting in from our CSV files. So I'm going to get rid of our connector here that's just using reading in the CSV data into a string because I don't like that. I like using schemas because they're much nicer. So we're going to reinstate this particular connector here. So spool dir 2 and if I create this, so this is taking the schema, it's setting the key, it's mapping the fields to the correct schema types, the correct uh, data type, sorry. It's going to create that. We're going to have a look at the topic. So it was uh, called uh, underscore zero two. And we're going to look at that. We can see we've got the data in the topic. If I put that orders file back in, let me do that. So let's change into the data folder and copy the uh, processed orders into unprocessed. Nothing happens. The connector says, well, I've seen that file already. I'm going to move it into processed. So we can see that. And it's moved it into processed but it's not going to add any new data into the topic because it's processed orders.csv already. A connector called 02, even though we deleted it previously, we've now recreated it, offsets attract against connector names. If you want it to reprocess everything, give it a new name. So let's see what we can do with this data. We're going to take this data and what we could do, let's just go and shove it into a database. So let's copy this little thing here. So I'm using my blog here for, for reference so you can see what I'm copying and pasting against. But what we're going to do now is we're going to use Kafka Connect. And if we remind you what plugins we've got, we've got a plugin for these here, pulling in the data from, uh, spool, from the spool DAR, from flat files on disk. We've also got connectors for taking data from a Kafka topic and pushing it into a database. So let's use that. You'll also notice there's one for pulling it in from a database as well. That's a different talk for a different day. So let's move that up to the top of the screen and let's do this. So we're going to create ourselves a connector it's called a sync this time. It's going to take the data from our orders topic and push it down to Postgres. 
We're using the JDBC sync connector. We say, well, here is Postgres with our JDBC URL. I'm using Postgres because the Postgres JDBC driver ships with Kafka Connect JDBC connector. If you want to use MySQL, you want to use Oracle, you want a SQL Server, DB2, and so on and so on and so on. All you need is the JDBC driver for your appropriate database. You put that into the JDBC connector folder. There's a separate video, which I'll link to on the screen, which shows you how to go and do that if you're not sure. Once you've got your JDBC driver installed and you've bounced your Kafka Connect worker, you can take data from a Kafka topic and put it into any database that you want. So there's our connector. Here's our topic we're going to read data from. We can say create the tables and we can create the tables because we've got the schema. Because we're not just got like a lump of CSV data, which is just a string. We've got data with a schema. We've got fields, we've got order ID, which is an integer. We've got order total, which is a float. And we're gonna say, take the order ID as the primary key. So the primary key mode here is record value, which means take a value from the, um, from the record uh, payload itself. Which field are we gonna take? We're gonna take the order ID. We could also say PK mode is record key, which would take the value from the record key, either the entire thing, or we could say PK fields and specify which fields from the key. So we're doing that, we're saying, say, use the upsert mode, and we're gonna write it to a, file, a table called orders. So we go and create that. It says, well, I've created it. Let's just go and check that's running. So we're gonna use the sort command here. Again, another little snippet, take the, the uh, data from the Kafka Connect REST API. This pulls out more extended information. I think it was added in Apache Kafka 2.3. Um, you can also do it in earlier versions, but you don't have the same rich API here. You have to query it again for each connector. We pass that out, we kind of run some fancy stuff on it and you can see what's happening. Okay, so here's our sync and it says it's running. Interestingly, the source itself has failed. So we'll have to come back to that in a moment, but the sync is running, which means we've taken data from our Kafka topic loaded by that CSV file and we've pushed it down to a database. And if we're gonna have a look at the database now, I say, here's Postgres, show me which tables you've got. So I've got a table called orders. Tell me about orders. And it says, well, I've got a table called orders. It's got some integers, it's got a float, it's got some text fields. Pretty cool, huh? And we can say select star from orders. And it says, well, there's your data for orders. You've got your order ID, your customer ID, your make, your model, and so on. And all of this is possible by using a JSON configuration file saying pull data from this, this CSV file into Kafka. Another JSON configuration file saying take data from this Kafka topic and push it to that database because we're using schemas. Because we've got schemas present in the schema registry, Kafka Connect, when we say take data from this Kafka topic and push it to this database, Kafka Connect as a consumer goes to the schema registry, give me the schema, now I have the schema, now I can go and run the DDL against the target system. If we're going to have a look at the log for Kafka Connect, so docker logs Kafka Connect, and we search through that for, uh, what's it going to be? It's going to be create, isn't it? So we say create table. We can see this is what the sync connector is doing. Let's make that a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So the Postgres uh, sync connector is saying, I'm going to create a table with some SQL. Here is my DDL. There's my DDL because I have got the schema. I've got the schema, it's an integer, it's a real field, it's a float, and so on, because we've got the schema. If you're just chucking CSV, strings into a Kafka topic, you don't have a schema, you've got a lump of string. And now you need to figure out well, how I'm gonna process that so I can actually access the data within it. So if we just close that, and if we go back to here, select star from orders where uh, order ID is 42. It says, well, here's the information for order ID 42. Now let's see if we can get that to update. So the connector itself has failed at the moment. So let's just try and recreate it. Um, and see if we can do this. So zero 02, here's my configuration for zero 02. So we've gone and created that. Um, so a lazy way to force it to restart is simply submit with a put call against the REST API. Just go and create the thing again. Um, and sometimes that works sufficiently. So let's see if that's running. It's still failed. So let's have ourselves a little look at the Kafka Connect worker log itself. So let's go and have a look at uh, log slash f Kafka Connect. And we can see down here. So the interesting thing is the connector itself is running because it's spitting out all of these messages. But if we page back up and look for uh, failed, not got anything there. Let's have a look at that for error. So you can see that's okay. So the worker itself has thrown an error saying it couldn't find any input files. Okay, so 
the connector itself has said, well, when you tried to start me up, I went to look for a file to get the schema from, it wasn't there, so I'm gonna be in a state of error. But the tasks within the connector, because uh, you'll notice if we go back to this page here, uh, not this one, this one here, you'll see the tasks, which is this, this column here, the task is running, but the, so the task there is running, the connector is failed. So that's kind of interesting. Normally you end up with the other way around. The connector is running, but the tasks have failed, so it means nothing happens. Whereas if we go and put some data into that folder, it's probably going to work. So let's go and have a look in uh, Unprocessed, and let's go and create ourselves. So I'm going to open a file called newdata.csv. So this is VI. You can use uh, R to pull in data from another file. So we're going to pull it in from Processed, and pull it in from Foo, and put our header field in there and delete all of these down here. So we've just got a single record that we're gonna put in. I'm gonna change the record ID to 42. So here is the information that we pushed into the system. Okay, so this was the original value. Um, so order total was this, the make was Toyota, model was RAV4. So we're saying here for order of 42, we're actually gonna update that order. We're gonna put completely different information into it. So let's close that file. Okay, so we've written the file called new data CSV. If the connector task is actually running, it's probably picked that up. So let's see if it has. So ls minus l um, against these folders, change back up so you can see all of them. And that, okay, so it's, it's picked up the new file, it's put it into the process folder. So in theory, if we go down to here and query it again for where it's 42, it's worked. So I shouldn't sound too surprised, but I've not actually worked this through beforehand. So we've said, here is the data that we originally loaded. Now we're saying, select everything from the orders table where order ID equals 42. We don't have two rows. We don't have like order ID 42 is this, order ID 42 is that, because we defined a primary key based on order ID, and we said use upsert mode. Don't just insert these rows continually. If we're using order ID as our logical business key, then we can say, well, if we get new information for that key come through, just update it in place. Now, updating order IDs is not always what you would want to do, but if you've got like reference information, like customers, a customer name has changed or their address has changed, you want to update that in place. And if we just take a quick step back here for a moment, to get data from a CSV file into a database, which flows through pretty much near real time, like it's a loaded term, but like let's say low latency, and it updates the data in place based on a given key on data from a CSV file, we've used two different connectors, the Spool DAR Kafka Connect connector, the JDBC Sync Kafka Connect connector, and two JSON configuration files. And that's all we needed to do to build out this pipeline. Let me show you one last thing. So we've got data, shoving it down to a database, but what if we want to take this stream of data from these CSV files that let's say another system is like dumping them into this folder, we need to pick them up and get them into Kafka. We can also use something called key SQL DB to process them. And I always bring key SQL DB into my demos and my talks because it's really neat because it lets you use SQL to interrogate data that you've got flowing through Kafka topics. So if I say show topics, we can see we've got a bunch of different topics here. And this is the one that I've been loading previously where we've got a schema, we've got the data type set correctly, we've got the key set correctly. And I can say like print the contents of this topic. And this acts as a consumer. So it simply says, go and have a look at this topic and I need to say from beginning, because it, otherwise it's just reading it from the end. Print it from the beginning. It says, well, here is the contents of that topic. It says it's got a key, it says it's got a value, and so on. And we can take that and we can create ourselves a stream. So let's say uh, create stream orders with Kafka topic with that and the value format, the format of the value part of the message is Avro. And I could use Protobuf, I could use JSON schema. We're gonna use Avro here as I've created the stream. Now, I can't talk enough about schemas. Well, probably I can, you probably think I can, but schemas are so important because as a user, someone has said to me, there's a data, there's a topic here with data in about our orders. It was CSV data, but we applied a schema when it was ingested. So now it's just a topic with order data in. As a consumer, as a user, I go to it and say, oh, that topic sounds useful. I've created a stream against it with this command here, create stream orders. And now I can say this, describe orders. Tell me about this object you've just created. It says, well, here you go. It's got a schema. So that schema has come from the schema registry. As a user, I've not had to go back to the team that wrote that data to the topic and say, well, what's this field here? And what's this field here? And so on. You can actually use delimited data in KSQL DB. So we could say, and create it, it's delimited, and we say, well, we loaded it into this topic here, and it says, well, 
and you typed it out wrong, delimited, it says no column supplied. It's like, well, I don't know, it's just like it's just a string. So what am I supposed to do with that? So then you have to do this, and you have to type in the schema, so create stream orders, and we've got like order ID as an integer, and so on. And it says, well, no. okay, this is going to get daft, orders ID 2. Okay, we've created that, we say describe orders 2. It says, well, okay, well, you've typed in the first part of it, but we need the rest of it. So you can enter a schema against delimited data, but now you've shifted that onus of declaring the schema once at ingest into every time a user wants to use that data. So it's much, much better to define it once at ingest and then your one or many, and it often is many consumers, can access that same schema. Let's go back to our original object that we we're happy with, so our, our orders object where we said describe orders, here is our stream of data. And I'm going to tell um, case equal DB that we want to query the data from the beginning of the topic. And I can do this, select star from orders. This is, well, here is your data, if you type in the right command. Here is all your data from that particular topic. And you can see you've got your order ID and you've got your makes and your models. We can filter it. Show me the data from here, where the delivery, sit, delivery city is leads. And it says here are all the orders for leads. And if I go and add some new data into that topic, so let's go and add some new data into that topic. So change into the data folder and vi unprocessed um, more data.csv and copy in the rows from processed. And what do we call it? Foo. That will do. Okay, so we add in some new information. So this has been loaded, but it's not shown up in our new data. Why not? Well, because that's for leads. So if you just go and have a look at what we actually called it. So we said that was for Sheffield. So let's go and query this up here for Sheffield. It's going to say, here's all the data from the topic. And let's go and do that same thing again so we can actually show that it works. Uh, so vi unprocess more data too. We've got to give it a new file name each time. And we're going to pull that in from processed and call it from there. And we do this. It's going to pick up that file and you see it ticked over there. We end up with a duplicate because we put the same data into it. But as we enter data into the CSV file, the schema gets applied, it gets stored in the Kafka topic, key SQL DB is subscribed to that topic. It's just a consumer like several layers down. It filters the data. It says, okay, here's your Sheffield data. And we could take that and we could say, well, I would like to create a topic or create a stream of orders for Sheffield. Ah, select everything from here where the delivery city is Sheffield. It's okay, I'll go and create a stream. I'm going to take all of your existing data and any new data. And I can say list topics. Here are my topics. Here's one for orders Sheffield. Pretty cool. Print orders Sheffield. Here are all of the orders for Sheffield, and it's just a Kafka topic. So you can use case equal DB to filter this data as it's arriving in the system. You could also use it to build out aggregations. So again, just going down to my blog, which is why I'm looking down here, we've got an example of some SQL that you can run and say, well, never mind just filtering the data, how about aggregating it up? Tell me for each delivery city, how many orders there have been, what was the maximum order value from orders stream and group it by this. And now it says, well, here are your aggregate values. And if we yet again go and create some more unprocessed data and yet again copy in the data. So let's add in some data. So this is going to be for Sheffield. So at the moment, there have been 77 orders for Sheffield. This is the maximum order value. We're going to add some new data into that topic. And you'll see down here in key SQL DB, we don't have command back. We don't have, we don't have control back. So like here is the data so far. It's known as a push query. We've subscribed to that stream of changes. It will push to us any changes to that aggregate. So in here, let's change that aggregate and we're going to give it a nice big order number so that we have a new maximum value and it's for Sheffield. And we write that into the system that goes into the Kafka topic, key SQL DB picks up that value. Uh, we obviously didn't make the order value big enough because we've not hit that, but we can see the order value, sorry, the order count for Sheffield has gone up. So that's using a push query to subscribe to a series of aggregate changes. You can also use what's called a pull query to do a key value lookup against the state that we're materializing within KSQL DB. So if I head over here and say, um, let's persist that into a table. So create table um, city ag as. So we've created the city aggregation. 
describe the city aggregation. And this is also just a Kafka topic under the covers. And I can say select star, uh, select order count and biggest order uh, from city ag, where the row key is Sheffield. It says, well, there is the value. And you'll notice it says query terminated. Here's my flashing cursor because it's a pull query. We've pulled that value out of the state store within key SQL DB and we're now back at the prompt. Has it changed? Well, I don't know. I could go and re-query it. It's kind of like doing a key value lookup against a database, hence the key SQL DB bit. So key SQL is not just for processing streams of data and filtering and joining and writing out to new Kafka topics. It's also for building these state stores that we can query. We can query them within key SQL DB like this. So do that select there. We can also take that select, like how many orders have, been, have there been for leads? So someone's opened up our app on a, their phone, how, what's the current order value or maximum order value for leads? They type in leads. Our app itself can do a key value lookup against KSQL DB and says, well, what's the current aggregation for leads? It says, well, okay, let's do that. And do this. It says, well, here is the current order count. This is how many there have been for leads. This is the biggest order value. You can take that, and I've done it within the KSQL command prompt, we can actually take that and we can run it as a REST API call against KSQL DB. So I'm going to take that same query, select order count, the biggest order from here, where the row key is leads with the appropriate quoting around this to make sure it works within the context of a curl call. And we do that, it says, well, here is the current value for that, uh, for that field. And if we do this and add some more data in, so changing to data, and we're going to VI processed, unprocessed, and more data03.csv and copy in from here, processed uh, that and do that. Make sure we've got some leads data coming through. So there's a leads one. So now a CSV file, we're adding a new CSV file into the unprocessed folder. The connect says it's going to pick that up, write it to the Kafka topic. KSQL DB gets that update from the topic and it updates its stateful aggregation. Okay, so we do that. In fact, let me show you, if I run that uh, query up here, emit changes. So this is a push query. So it's going to tell us what's the current state of that aggregation and any subsequent changes. So here's the current state and it says press control C to interrupt. It's a push query. It's going to tell us as that changes. And let's change it. So we're going to write that CSV file down here. The aggregate is going to change. It's going to get re-emitted by KSQL DB up here. And our application at the bottom here, it can reissue its REST call to do that key value lookup using a pull query. It says, well, here is the current value for that aggregation. So you can use push queries to have the changes pushed to you. You can have the pull query to just do a key value lookup against a particular key value. So that's got a little bit more complex than simply get CSV data into a Kafka topic. But I wanted to illustrate quite what you can build out with some very, very simple commands, a bit of JSON, a bit of SQL, to build out these stateful aggregations if you want to, to show why schemas are important because you can take CSV data and push it to a database if you actually define your schemas up front. And if you really don't care about the schemas or you don't have access to the schemas or you just want this thing to work and just get CSV data into a topic, you can do so. Just use this string converter, don't generate the schemas and you're set with that as well. So hopefully that was useful. Check out my other Kafka Connect videos on the channel here. There's a bunch of talks that I've done at different conferences as well. Subscribe to the channel, go and check out Confluent Platform as well.